Good morning, Bulldogs. It is Wednesday. It's April 29th, 2020. Uh, here's your New York Times uh, top stories in this chilly morning. Not supposed to rain through this evening, though, so I guess that's good. So the first story is that the GDP is to show a shrinking economy with worse to come. So GDP stands for Gross Domestic product. And it's basically a figure about how much stuff is our country producing. Um, food, um, things, you know, cars, clothing, whatever, um, and, and ver sometimes various services. Um, and they're saying that number is going to reflect the economy um, that has been suffering. Uh, you'll see tomorrow on Thursday, we'll have new unemployment numbers again. Um, I know, I know plenty of people that are either have either been laid off or in fear of laying off and my thoughts to you, if that's been affecting your family. Um, so all sorts of things like that. Uh, the next story is that the U S coronavirus death toll is far higher than reported according to the CDC data, uh, center for disease control. So if you see this map or not map, these these graphs. I know it's sort of small. You can go into New York Times today. It's right on their front page, and you can actually click on the article, and then it brings you some more um, graphs. This is the death rate um, that we've uh, experienced, and it shows from from January through April. And if you see um, by April how those lines go way up, the red line that's 2020. Those bluish green sea foam, if you will, sort of matches my hat and shirt today. Um, that is the, the average rate for the past five years. So what they're saying, if it's gone up this much, um, that there's actually a lot of other deaths we've been experiencing, um, were probably also coronavirus deaths. People probably just did not know, um, that they had the coronavirus. And then, um, this article, um, concerns all of us, concerns you, Sorry, the breath in my mouth there. Um, go ahead and read this article. Um, let me know your thoughts if you do. Um, it says, despite despite Trump's nudging, schools are likely to stay shut for months. Notice this says likely. It's not an opinion piece, but um, there is no official word. So don't make me like trying to like jump the gun here. There is no official word that New Jersey schools will be closed past mid-May. Right? Um, but this is just saying... Um, with all the signs that are that it's not likely that schools will reopen. So I do want to see you guys all again. Um, but when will that be? Um, we don't know yet. Uh, so it also, the article goes on to say, like, when schools do reopen, um, changes that will probably have to be made. What kind of changes do you think need to be in place uh, when school reopens? Will you be comfortable in your class. Now, luckily here at STEM, our classes are not that large, um, but do you would you still want a smaller one? Um, what Are you concerned about the bus or the cafeteria? Will we have to stagger schools? Or I don't know. There's only all these ideas out there. And of course, I'm not on the committee and you're not on the committee, but it, it's good to sort of um, to read things like this and, and figure out what you're comfortable with and what scientifically makes sense. All right. So now on to the BBC. And I've said this is so, several times that sometimes I think the BBC is just like, hey, how stupid are Americans today? Um, because, but I have to remember that we are right now where the most cases are. So they're going to feature what's going on in America. So um, the top story in the BBC news, which um, has Related really to this picture here, is that Trump orders the meatpacking plants to stay open. So he used the Defense Production Act, which actually goes uh, was created traditionally for wartime, to keep plants open. Um, if you, well, you better not been to a store, but if your family's been to a grocery store, they may have told you how, like, you know, it, we're out of chicken. Or at first, people were just hoarding meats, um, but now. Um, some meats generally, it seems like it's harder to come by. Also, think of what usually buys meats that are not open now. School, right? You often ha see meat on the menu at school. Um, restaurants, even those that are open for takeout. I'm sure it's much less food than they're normally producing. Think of all the food um, that's made in 
casinos that are closed or different vacation areas, right? So a lot less meat is being needed. That's one part of the story. The other part is that these factories where meats are made, uh, however you want to call it, um, butchered, um, they um, often have people working in close proximity. And so far, over 3,000 workers have been diagnosed with the coronavirus. And unfortunately, 20 of them have been passed. So that's one of the reasons also why production has slowed. But the president's like, no, these, these need to stay open. So I guess that means you'll probably get your chicken nuggets. There's a lot of other things related to this story. Um, an assignment we're going to do next time um, relates to the meat industry. So um, keep this in mind, and we'll probably come back to these ideas again. Um, the BBC also, I noticed, has some like uh, good news articles, which I think we all could use uh, right now. And there's a story about the oldest doctor in France, who's 98 years old. And even though he's obviously at high, high risk, how he's still caring for patients. So go ahead and check that out today, especially uh, maybe you buy med kids that you might find that of interest. And then another story, I guess, sort of jabbing at us. You may have seen this online or in the news yesterday, if you were paying attention, is that our vice president um, went to the Mayo Clinic and he was the only person there without a mask, even though the po their policy was you should wear a mask. And he explained why he didn't think he had to. And blah, 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 blah. Um, bottom line, if, if you know your family's going out, I'm, I'm hoping they're wearing masks. It's, it's like the law now in New Jersey. Um, if anyone's made a creative mask, I would love to see them. My daughter is having fun cutting up my old pants and uh, taping on my hair ties and, and making all sorts of masks. So I'm sure um, we need them right now, right? Okay, so this is probably why uh, where you fast forward to, you fast forward to this part, right? What do you need to do today? All right, so today we are going to focus on Hard Times. Hard Times is a novel. It is a satire. It was written by Charles Dickens, the English author, um, during the Industrial Revolution. And it really reflects what things were like during the Industrial Revolution. So we're going to read chapter two, which is titled Murdering the Innocents. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. When you open up the doc in Canvas, um, you'll see that I created a video um, mm -hmm. last week along with the help of my children where I, um, oops, I just got an update because we were talking about the economy. The U.S. economy shrunk by 4.8% in January. Oh, that's great news. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying, um, so I've, re I've recorded myself reciting chapter two. All right. And so we've been looking at our screens way too much. Uh, I'm sure you have. So if you want, instead of reading off a screen, you can watch me recite the video, or you could not even look at it at all and just listen and listen to me recite chapter two. If you'd rather read it because you're sick of hearing my voice, I totally understand. You don't want to see my kids' cute puppets, whatever. Okay. You can read. I attached the link, the website. Now you may, if you have access to a printer, want to print that out and actually be able to read it. Then you can maybe annotate it or highlight it. Sometimes it's good to have old fashioned papers in our hands and get off the screens these days. Maybe you want to read it and while it's listening at the same time, right? Do what strategy works best for you. Okay. This is not due today's Wednesday, Thursday night. Okay. Now there are questions that you need to do. Okay, and it says you don't need to do all the questions. We'll say do one of this section, do two here, do three here. Um, so it's not a bad idea to read the questions before you read or watch. Okay, now, two other things to keep in mind. Um, I purposely kept the last two assignments pretty short because our April project is due tomorrow. Right, many of you still need to do it. Remember, there's two parts you have to fill out a doc and you um, make a slide. The chance to get a four, if you haven't done it already, is sort of gone um, because you had to submit it like two days before it was due so that I could share it on these videos. Nobody in all my classes did one for today. No, wait, that's a lie. One person did in my honors class, no one did it for my classes today, four or six or even seven. Um, so 
that's that. If you're having trouble finding a poet, okay, um, an idea is you go to Wikipedia, which I know we always this Wikipedia, but this works. Go on today's date. So search April 29th or search whatever date you're going to use. And then just do control find poet. And you'll find a bunch of poets who were either born on that day or who died on that day. All right. Now, those of you who are doing the podcast, that's a lot of you in today's classes. I want to say the majority of you in today's classes, you need to finish that. Bless you. By today. I need to send it in tomorrow. I can't keep getting ones in tomorrow because I have to do like all my regular work and then help my kids with school, which takes hours and hours and hours. So I need to make sure that um, t by tonight I have all of the things I need to send out tomorrow. So you need to email me your podcast. Um, it needs to be a file that I can upload onto SoundCloud. I am not looking forward to this work, but I am looking forward to seeing um, what you guys did. I know you're working hard on that. Okay, if you've been working on it, you got to submit one. You can't just say, oh, it's, eh, whatever, because I know you guys all recorded stuff before you left. If you didn't do it on the podcast, you'll be submitting something else before the year's out. So what if you're like, I didn't do the project and I have to submit the podcast. I don't want to do today's assignment. This is a strategy, and I am not discouraging you from doing this work. Hard Times is a great piece to read. If you have to do both and you're overwhelmed, with all your assignments, okay? If you have a good grade, not doing one classwork assignment won't make much difference or do half of it or something. I'm not just encouraging you to not do it, but if you are so overwhelmed, all right, just think practically. If you're not doing well in this class, well then um, email me and say like, I don't know how to get this stuff done and we will figure it out together, okay? Don't be overwhelmed, don't be super stressed. Um, I can't push back the NPR, deadline because that was actually already pushed back but we can work with um figuring out what is makes the most sense for you to do i will look for eggs when i'm done all right um so national poetry month is closing um here is a poet um who died on this day in 1658 i believe he was british yeah he was british because remember he was involved with the um civil war john cleveland and uh, if you read his whole poem um, but I thought this little line uh, related to what we're doing with now. Ill forced by general hate, you cease to roam the world and for a plague live at home. That's what we're all doing right now, living at home, right? Um, today, um, Garrick did share um, a poet and a, a poem from today. Um, it looks like it's about a woman at the age of 36, but um describing um i live alone it hasn't always been that way um blah 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 but many um people are living alone right now um people who are single or maybe in an industry like like the medical industry where it's not safe to go home to their families or people that loved lost ones um from this virus so if you know any of those people uh please check out uh, on them see how they're doing um i know you can't go visit them but you know uh, a call or a letter or something. Think of something. Uh, think of some way you can um, make someone happy today. All right. Um, so I miss you all. Um, uh, stay in touch if you're having any issues or problems or there's any way I, I can help you with this, um, this whole world we're living in um, when it comes to our class and anything else that maybe I can help with. All right. Um, have a great weekend if you don't check in on my videos the rest of this week. And we'll talk again on Monday. All right. Stay safe. Be well, Bulldogs. Now I have to go find some eggs. Stop finding.